$550 and the AirPods Max can't even stream lossless audio. Never mind the $250 AirPods Pro. Why? Because they're Bluetooth and wait for it, Bluetooth is lossy. Lossy like trying to fit a river through a fire hose is lossy or like trying to watch the cam version of No Way Home IMAX is lossy. You can have the absolute best source in the multiverse, but Bluetooth has such limited bandwidth, it's such a narrow pipe that you just can't fit real true lossless audio through it, including Apple Music lossless, or hitting a subscribe button so we can build the best community in tech together, lossless. So what do you do? I mean, besides hitting that button and cursing in the comments, if you're Apple, maybe you kill Bluetooth, MDK it just to watch it die, and then you replace it, or maybe superset it with a silicon and signal solution that's way, way better. That's what front page tech's John Prosser said Apple was planning on doing, updating the AirPods or AirPlay or both to support lossless audio. AirPlay being Apple's wireless media streaming protocol. It's what the iPhone uses to send video to the Apple TV or audio to the HomePod, for example. And I'll get to how in a minute, but the why is fascinating and important. See, according to Apple lore, the original version of AirPlay was a weekend project, a hack, something to get like the old Airport Express AirTunes protocol up and running on iOS as fast as possible. It was really, really cool and compelling and worked well enough, at least at the time, that Apple was willing to ship it. But it was also extremely limited and inherited a ton of technical debt, like a lot of Apple's audio stack back then. Something they found out the hard way when they wanted to ship that OG HomePod with features like multi-room audio. So AirPlay 2, refactored to fit the needs of a way, way more modern media ecosystem. Ultra low power Bluetooth to broadcast availability, to negotiate connections, and ultra high capacity point to point Wi-Fi to handle the actual media streaming, which was really critically important for a product like the OG HomePod whose whole entire marketing pitch was based on it sounding way, way better than an ordinary pair of Bluetooth speakers. And part of me, part of me still wonders if the reason Apple didn't include Bluetooth on the HomePod was so that it could never, not ever sound only as good as a regular old Bluetooth speaker, not just in our rooms, but in the reviews, in the Pepsi challenges that would have popped up all over YouTube, just blowing up that whole entire marketing pitch. And yes, I know. Apple spent millions on AirPlay 2 and Russia just took a pencil to space, by which I mean, why not just include an actual hard line in for actual high quality audio? But all caps love it or just hate its breathing guts, Apple is all in on the future being wireless. And for AirPods, which Apple was developing at the exact same time as HomePods, AirPlay just wasn't an option because unlike the Apple TV, unlike the HomePod, AirPods weren't gonna be plugged into a wall 24 seven. They weren't gonna be plugged in into anything. Well, except for our ears and tiny, tiny batteries. And while Wi-Fi can certainly be more efficient than Bluetooth for very specific use cases, basically race to sleep or transiting very fast bursts of data and then shutting down the radio to save power, streaming media is pretty much the exact opposite of that use case. And thanks to the way each protocol has been used and how the chips and radios have evolved to support those uses, AirPods were limited to Bluetooth. It's very, very low bandwidth and all the lossy, lossy compression that came with it. Which brings us to Gary Jeeves, Apple's VP of acoustics, who's legit awesome and what he just told What Hi-Fi when he said that Apple has to work really hard to squeeze everything they can out of Bluetooth and that they can do a bunch of tricks to try to maximize what they can get through Bluetooth but they really do want more bandwidth. And he wouldn't elaborate further, he stopped right there, but he said Apple really would like more bandwidth. Now, that first part involved spending just some of Apple's billions on one of the largest state-of-the-art of audio labs in the world, just down from Apple Park in Cupertino. And I managed to get a tour of that back when the HomePod was released. And from the negative decibel quiet place to rooms that could be molded and remolded to match the acoustic profiles of multiple, multiple test environments. Over the last few years, there's just been a serious escalation all around in Apple's physical and computational audio teams. As any of us who've used any of Apple's recent headphones, speakers, or mic systems can absolutely attest, but also in the silicon. The original AirPods used W1, 
Apple's first wireless chipset. Basically, tiny little computers in each pod, they're what made the Bluetooth connections and synchronizations so quick, so easy, solid, reliable, low latency, and consistent. I mean, Bluetooth was and is still Bluetooth, so if you put enough of your ugly bag of mostly water body between, say, your iPhone in your back pocket and your AirPods in your ears, more than they can compensate for, you can still disrupt them. But for anyone who previously lived their lives on the island of traditional Bluetooth, W1's implementation was indistinguishable from Radio Magic. But then, for efficiency and specificity reasons, Apple split W1 into W2 and adding Wi-Fi handling and integrating them into the Apple Watch's system and package, or SIP. But also H1, Apple's first headphones chip for the second generation AirPods and eventually AirPods Pro and AirPods Max. And yes, H1 stuck to Bluetooth, but became basically its own SIP, using up to 10 audio cores to support really computationally heavy features like active noise cancellation, transparency mode, conversation boost, Dolby Atmos and spatial audio with dynamic head tracking, but not lossless audio, never lossless audio because stuck to Bluetooth. And like Gary said, Apple would like more bandwidth. Give the people more bandwidth. And just by way of showing how concerned Apple is for efficiency in the AirPods, the original HomePod used an A8 system on a chip the same chip as the iPhone 6. And the HomePod mini uses an S5 system and package, the same SIP as the Apple Watch Series 5. And by not recycling silicon, but spending actual real new money and resources on something custom for headphones, that just shows that everyone from the execs on down considers it to be essential, which is why I really wonder if Apple could just flip a bit and turn on Wi-Fi dependent AirPlay on existing AirPods, and not just because of the power draw, the potential hit on battery life, but because of the system architecture itself. And I mean, I would love, I would all caps love it. It would be the best surprise upgrade ever, but I'll only ever expect it when I see it. And having not seen it in the year and however long it's been since AirPods Pro and AirPods Max, and now more recently, Apple Music Lossless, those expectations are only dwindling. Same with Apple going all in on AppDex which is the Qualcomm High Fidelity Bluetooth Audio Compression Codec. More specifically, the recently announced AppDex Lossless, which, yes, all the nerd dreams and drool, all of it. But even though Apple and Qualcomm are playing nice with 5G modems these days, AppDex Lossless is really AppDex CD quality, 16 bits, 44.1 kilohertz, which is phenomenal for Bluetooth, legit game-changing for Bluetooth, and would be a huge improvement for AirPods but still Bluetooth. And Apple may want their dependency on Qualcomm to only go so far, if not to reverse and go entirely in the other direction. Also, just licensing a codec doesn't really seem to fit Apple's style, let alone their swagger. Not when their key product differentiator is better experience through tighter integration of hardware, software, and most recently, services. Which is why it's possible Apple will finally, the rock style, finally move to just replace Bluetooth altogether with something much higher performance, but also even more efficient. Maybe it's marketed as AirPlay 3, maybe not. Maybe it leans on a next generation H2 system and package for the AirPods Pro 2 and eventually AirPods Max 2, if there are an AirPods Max 2, but also maybe not. But supply chain exfiltrator extraordinaire Guo Mingqi just released a report saying that AirPods Pro 2 would not only get a new design and speakers in the charging case to improve the Find My experience, but they'd also support Apple's own lossless audio codec, or ALAC. Now, I'll drop a link to more on Apple's upcoming AirPods and all of their 2022 products in the description right below the like button. But here's a question that pretty much immediately popped into my mind. Which version of ALAC, since Apple's codec supports 16 to 32 bits and up to 384 kilohertz? And yeah, unclear but I'll also assume the least for now so I can be surprised rather than disappointed later. Even if these are the exact freaks and geeks who just added 10-bit ProRes HQ to the iPhone Pro. But if Apple really wants to blow minds and ears, they're gonna really want that more bandwidth than Bluetooth by itself provides. And that leaves some type of point-to-point Wi-Fi or maybe some fusion of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, even ultra wideband like the U1 chip, none of which are ideal on their own for a variety of reasons, but maybe could be very, very clever in combination. 
And I mean, yes, it's really just an implementation detail at that point, but one I am beyond super curious about. I know in Neil A. Patel's worst nightmare hellscape of a world, and mine too, honestly, this, as of right now, almost entirely fanfic new protocol would be all the next generation of AirPods and headphone silicon in general support, like AirPlay 2 on the HomePods. But my own personal hope and dream would be that Apple would not so much rip and replace Bluetooth, as satisfying as that may be, but will superset it. And that way, Nile's head is saved from actually exploding. But also, if you have an older device or a non-Apple device that can't support lossless, you can elegantly fail over, fall over, into good old fashioned Bluetooth lossy, maybe even Aptex, but quad major but, if you have the latest and the greatest from Apple, you get the absolute best lossless AirPods experience on the planet. That is, if your human, as in non-Kryptonian ears, can even distinguish the difference beyond audiophile LARPing or whatever. Now, I'm nowhere nearly smart enough to figure that part out because math, science, computer science, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, cryptocurrency, AirPods on the blockchain. But that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in, the online interactive STEM learning platform. And there is no better time to start Brilliant than right now with the new year. They have a growing catalog of courses specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in visual, hands-on ways. And I cannot stress this enough. I wish my school had been like this because it would have been just so, so much less stressful. For example, instead of trying to learn how coding works through overly complicated traditional computer programming courses, Brilliant has actual, fun, interactive challenges, ones that let you shift blocks of pseudocode around, receive immediate feedback, and get results. You feel like you're just having fun solving puzzles, but the whole time you're learning how algorithms work. And once you know that, coding becomes way, way less intimidating, and who knows, Maybe you'll be the one to unlock the whole future of computational audio and the next, next generation of AirPods. Because everyone, everyone gets started somewhere. And the best way to get started for free is to visit brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie or click on the link in the description. And the first 200 view will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel. And so is clicking on the playlist above to see everything Apple has coming our way in 2022. So just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.